tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. Satnam everyone. My name is Reverend Reg and I'm here again for Practical Magic where we talk about metaphysics, the law of attraction, science and spirituality, coherence, the power of the spoken word, meditation, and anything that's related to this evolving field. And before we start, I want to invite everyone for a simple affirmation and chanting meditation. So please close your eyes. And take a deep breath in and out. Take a deep breath in and out. Let's take another one. Inhale and exhale. Please put your right palm on your heart and affirm with me, I love myself for all that I was, all that I am, and all that I want to become. I am worthy because God made me so. And let's chant one satnam for ourselves, another one for someone we are praying for, and the rest for our global village. Satnam 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 I invite all of you to feel that inner smile from your heart You may gently open your eyes. All right, so that was awesome. And I'm very excited because today we're talking about the art and science of real magic. And we actually have the author behind it. And just a little trivia. One of the things that really excites me about this, about two years ago, I was in Baguio. And you know that that place has high altitude and I was there with friends for a retreat and it was really an amazing evening with friends. We were drinking wine and it was a very starry night, like a Vincent Van Gogh thing. So anyway, at that time I was thinking to myself, you know, I'm, I always believe in magic and miracles and you know, thinking things through the power of the law of attraction and demonstrating it. And of course, I always have at the back of my mind, you still have to take inspired action when you do it. So I'm very excited because, you know, when I first encountered the book, The Art and Science of Real Magic, I was really amazed because Many years back then, when I would talk about the law of attraction, I sound like the silly person to friends and family where I'm this crazy dreamer. So today, I'm so happy that there's actually a process to it and someone who has expertise on this subject is going to talk about this tonight. So she's a certified spiritual life coach, mindfulness meditation teacher, and an artist. She brings together perennial wisdom and cutting-edge scientific knowledge to facilitate profound transformation in her students and clients. And for her certificates and work, she has a PhD in metaphysical counseling, a master's degree in metaphysical science. She's also a certified mindfulness meditation teacher, a certified life coach, a certified NLP practitioner, certified hypnotherapy practitioner, certified EFT practitioner, heart math facilitator, science of mind practitioner, certified in energy healing modalities for Reiki levels 1 to 4, reconnective healing and quantum healing, 
And this is a test that offers a tremendous knowledge base and scientific background in the metaphysical world. By far the most of any teachers I've met. Basically, she's an expert in not just the woo-woo, but the bona fide science behind it. Beyond this, Diana possesses profound wisdom that goes beyond mere education. She is clearly connected, intuitive, and she harnesses the power to identify the root causes beneath your problems and as it follows to help you heal. Part of her magic is inspiring people to truly see themselves as the powerful, perfectly imperfect beings they are. Perhaps the first to practicing the real magic she specializes in. What drew me first to Diana was her remarkably calm, compassionate, and gentle approach. She meets people wherever they are without judgment or pressure. Having experienced serious difficulties in her past, she understands all manners of struggles. And watching her in action, it's abundantly clear that she genuinely cares about every person. It's not about the money or ego. She just wants to be of service. Additionally, I'm astounded by her humility. You would never know she has a PhD and impeccable credentials. Lastly, Diana seems to walk her own talk a sign of a genuine teacher. In fact, her nature seems almost too calm, aligned, selfless, and ethereal to be real. I think she may be an angel on earth. <laughs> so wow, that's a long list of credentials and amazing reviews from her clients. So I'm very excited for all of you to meet our guest today, Satnam, uh, Dr. Vihuni. Are you there? Satnam. <laughs> awesome. So uh, how is it there in California? It's good. It's very early morning and uh, <laughs> it's you know, like anticipating a beautiful day, regardless of everything awesome. that's happening. That's my attitude for today. And I, I'm really, really looking forward to our conversation. It's going to be very inspiring, I believe. Yeah, thank you for making time for us. <laughs> I know literally um, transmitting um, that energy, that frequency into the field where we go. So people who are interacting with each other and it's not necessarily even in person because uh, as we know, that energy is not only local, it's, it's not local as well. So uh, because everything is connected. So we do influence each other's fields and therefore we influence each other's emotions and state of being and their thinking and uh, that's that's a good thing and it could be a bad thing it depends like how, how aware we are of it because when we're not aware we are constantly are being influenced by others uh, drama right and there's a, a lot yeah. of drama in the world so if you're not aware especially if you're a sensitive person if you're an empath if you're not aware you're going to get overwhelmed very quickly and unfortunately that's exactly what's happening uh, with many people and that's why it is so important to have a spiritual practice these days if you don't have it already it's um, it's really now is the time to begin because it makes all the difference. I mean, I'm so grateful to have my practice because it would have been very difficult to go for somebody like me through that uh, amount, that kind of negativity, that heaviness that I, I can feel it. I can all feel it. And if, if I don't do my practice and I don't um, pay attention to what's going on, really what's going on uh, in, inside me, I would start feeling it very strongly. So, but I, Luckily, I have, um, I have developed a lot of abilities to, to be very conscious of everything that's going on. So I invite everybody to pay attention to what's going on and really understand the emotions that you feel. Because emotions can be very confusing. They're very yes. powerful, right? I, I like to describe them as our GPS system, it's like a compass. They, they're a kind of feedback mechanism that tells us whether we are we are going in the right direction, doing, making the right choices in our lives and so forth. But at the same time, they can be very confusing because just think of, we don't necessarily need to dwell on it for a long period of time. And that's because that's what really creates all kinds of problems mentally and, yes. and ultimately physically as well. We do it long enough. Yes. Thank you for sharing that because another thing that 
I also want to uh, bring up because he said you have to minimize the negativity. I know that you're also an art teacher. So how early did you actually start with your art? And I've listened to one of your interviews and I think you were talking about uh, your work as a raw artist. How long have you been uh, doing your work as an artist? Yeah, I've been painting um, since I was very young, actually. I, I started painting creating art, um, but I never imagined that could be a profession. For mm -hmm. me, choosing to be an artist was kind of an act of rebellion, you can say, because I didn't want to do any of the other things that uh, was going to uh, limit me in, um, in, my, in the ways of expression. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, because I grew up having this very different views of the world, Mm -hmm. It was such an important thing for me not to contribute to the problems in the world, which I saw, you know, problems in every system, whether it was education, healthcare, um, you know, judicial, you know, you name it. There was a problem, and not even in this country, but pretty much in a lot of places. It's eventually I realized it's a problem of consciousness, but it's, I didn't want to do something that's been done for many years in, in a way that was not really right in my opinion so i didn't want to go into any of that so i chose to be an artist and i was good at it that was you know people could yeah uh, obviously <laughs> yes um and so that kind of became uh, my thing and became my language and my way of expression because i was in extremely introverted i did not really express myself because I felt that something was wrong with me. I was one of those people who grew up feeling that I was kind of um, in the wrong place. I, just, like, <laughs> I didn't belong. I didn't feel like I belonged where I was. And uh, for me, language was my language of expression became art, and it was it was very healing for me at the time because I was struggling with a lot of depression and anxiety as well. So that. Stay tuned for the next episode. Only here on Z81 Radio, Manila.